All right, welcome back. Today, we are going to be starting with learning target three. I can identify independent and dependent variables in an experiment, and I can identify factors that should be held constant in an experiment. So your to-do list for today is step one, you are going to be watching this video and taking notes. Step two, you are going to be submitting your notes, so either a digital or photo of the paper for that assignment. And so you'll be able to either go in and attach your digital notebook from your Google Drive, or you can take a picture of your notes and upload it. And then step three is going to be completing the learning target two and three Google form. So let's get started with a little daily review here. So I want you to pause the video to make your own T-chart. And if you're in the digital notebook, it's in there for you. Writing qualitative and quantitative. And then you're going to be looking at the phrases up here. So there's three there and three there. And you're going to put them on the correct side. They are not necessarily in the correct spot already. So you're going to have to write them down where you think they go. So take a moment, pause the video and do that. All right, now let's go over your answers. So for qualitative observations, we have the candle smells like cranberries. So again, that's a quality. It's a trait, a characteristic about the cranberries. We're talking about the smell. The candle smells like cranberries, descriptive there. And then we have the boy's head feels warm. And so here, it's again, another characteristic. His head feels warm. And then again, qualitative is traits and characteristics. Now let's look at the quantitative column. So now we have the boy's temperature is 102. So this time we're quantifying it. We're giving it a number versus over here, we have the boy's head feels warm. So again, quantitative is our measurements or amounts. And then the last example, we have the candle burned for 10 minutes. So again, we quantified it. We talked about how long that it burned for. So now let's get started with some notes for today here. We are going to be starting with the term variable. So you should be writing down this stuff in your notebooks. So the definition of a variable is a factor that changes in an experiment. And there are two types of variables we are going to be talking about. There are independent variables and dependent variables. And so we have talked about those a little bit very briefly a couple of days ago when we were talking about hypothesis and forming scientific questions, right? So it should ring a little bit about ring a little bell in your head, and maybe you heard it back in middle school as well. So make sure you have those written down. And now let's talk about independent variable versus the dependent variable. So our independent variable is what the scientist changes on purpose. And then using it in a sentence, the independent variable, eh, the independent variable does the affecting. And then our dependent variable is gonna be the response to the change. And so using it in a sentence, it's the effect being measured. So again, our independent variable is what we're changing. And then, who knows, big. And then our dependent variable is the effect being measured or observed. So make sure you have those written down. So an example, let me move my camera out of the way here. An example for the independent variable is choosing to study for a science test instead of playing Fortnite. So what you were changing was studying instead of playing Fortnite. So the dependent variable, what we were measuring or observing is getting an A on that science test. So because you studied, you ended up with the A on the test. So exciting, yay. And now let's go on here. Now I want you to do a little bit of practicing on your own. So write down these two examples. So the first one being, you want to see if playing music makes plants grow taller. I want you to identify what the independent variable is and then what the dependent variable is. 
Scenario two, you want to see if practicing will improve a player's batting average. So again, write down what the independent variable is and what the dependent variable is. So take a moment to do that. And now let's go on to see our answers. So scenario one, you want to see if playing music makes plants grow taller. So our independent variable, what we are gonna be changing is the playing music. That is what is changing. Our dependent variable, what we're gonna be measuring is plant growth. Because again, plants grow taller. That's what we're gonna be observing. Scenario two, you want to see if practicing will improve a player's batting average. So we're, what we're gonna be changing, our independent variable is practicing. And then our dependent variable, what we're gonna be measuring is the batting average. All right, so let's go on. So now we've talked about variables and our independent variable and our dependent variable. So now to change things up, we're gonna talk about constants. So again, this is another definition you should be writing down in your notes. Constants are things that must stay the same throughout an experiment. So when only testing two variables at a time, everything else should remain constant. So why is it important to have constants in an experiment? Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can come up with a reason why it might be important to keep some things the same. So the main reason is if we aren't having some constants, some things being kept the same, is those things not being kept the same, if they're different throughout the experiment, it can skew our results. We might not get accurate results. So let's go back to the example of playing music and then seeing how it affects our plant growth. So if we want to be changing our independent variable to playing music and measuring the plant growth, what are some things we might wanna keep the same between all the plants? We might wanna think about how much water the plant is getting. We're gonna to wanna to think about how much sunlight the plant is getting. Maybe even the soil it's planted in, the type of environment you are keeping the plants in. We're gonna want all those things to be the same. So that way we can really see how the playing of music affects the growth without other factors coming into play. So let's go through another example here. So we're gonna go through the big fish example. So a fish store owner wants to sell the biggest goldfish in town. He thinks that the volume of the fish tank may have something to do with how big the fish will grow. So the store owner sets up an experiment to find out and a setup of ex his experiment is below. So he had four different fish tanks, one that was two gallons, four gallons, six gallons, and eight gallons. So knowing this, let's take a look and figure out the following. So what was his scientific question? What would be a hypothesis for this question? What was the independent variable? What was he changing? And how was the independent variable changed and by how much? And then what was the dependent variable, what he was observing, measuring? And then what are some constants? So take a moment, pause the video. You can go back to this slide as well to remind yourself. All right, so let's go over these parts. So the big fish example, the question that he was looking at, does the size of the fishbowl affect the size of the fish? Because remember he was wondering if the bigger the fishbowl, if it's gonna, the fish is gonna grow bigger. So then the hypothesis, if the size of the fishbowl is increased, then the fish will grow bigger. And then we have our because there is more space for it to grow. So notice the format of our hypothesis from the other day. If the, we have our independent variable, size of the fishbowl is increased, then our dependent variable, the fish will grow bigger because there's more space for it to grow. So again, our independent variable is the fishbowl size. That is what was being changed in this experiment. How much was it changing by? Well, if we go back and look, we see that it went up by two gallons each time. So we had a two, four, six, and eight gallon fish tank. 
And then our dependent variable, we wanted to see how big the fish will grow. So we'll be measuring the size of the fish. And now, what are some constants, some important things to keep the same? The bowl material. So we want to make sure that the fish are all in the same type of fish tank, right? We want to keep the water temperature the same. The composition of the water. We don't want to have one goldfish in salt water and another one in fresh water. We want to think about how much we are feeding the goldfish. They're getting the same food and the same amount of food. The amount of light the fish are getting. The breed, because again, we don't want to be looking at a piranha in one bowl and a goldfish in another. And those are some good constants that we're going to want to keep the same. So let's do another review problem here. So feel free to pause this video so you can write down your answers. But our question is, how does the number of hours a student studies affect the score they receive on a test? So I want you to take a moment to form a hypothesis to determine what the independent variable is, to determine the dependent variable, and to determine some constants. All right, let's go over these points. Let me move my camera out of the way again. So our question was, how does the number of hours a student studies affect the score they receive on a test? Our hypothesis, if a student studies, then they will do better on the test because they have more experience with the material. So we're saying if they study, they're going to get a higher test score because they had more repetition. So our independent variable, what was being changed, was the studying. And then our dependent variable we were going to be looking at is the test score. Some constants would be prior knowledge, doing the testing in the same room, trying to get everybody to get the same amount of sleep, amount of food consumed. I want to think about mood, stress levels. There's a lot of constants you would want to try to have in this type of experiment. And so that is it for our notes today. So make sure that you go on to submit your notes for step two today. And then step three is to complete that Google form and feel free to let me know if you have any questions or experiencing any issues.